heaven, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, you spared us another day to breathe and enjoy life. Be with us and guide us this evening. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, we're on the... I'm feeling sad that it's all going to finish on Monday. Does anyone want it to continue, by the way? Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak to the powers that be and see if we can somehow... Um, continue but I'm going to be away here and there and everywhere but we're going to somehow we're going to arrange, make arrangements so if you're interested let me know and we'll make arrangements to continue and we'll let you know when how and when we're going to do that now tonight we're going to look at Satan's secret strategy you see Satan does not like you at all in fact Satan wants you destroyed and so what we're going to look at tonight is some of the strategies that Satan has to deceive you and to make life hard for you. Now, there was a book. This book is called The Art of Warfare. And it was written by an Oriental. And this book teaches you that when you're in, in warfare, you've got to trick and deceive the enemy. So, if you're a very strong army, you kind of make out to the enemy that you're a weak army. But if you're a weak army, then you make out to the enemy that you're a strong army. And if you're far away, you make the enemy think you're close. And if you're close, you make the enemy think you're far away. And some of these techniques and, and, and tools that are found in this book were used during, during World War II. And they used this technique, they tricked Hitler a number of times, and it worked. And this is exactly what the devil does to us today. He's going to use every typical mean he can think of to trip you up. So let's see how we can beat him at his own game. We've learned so far that Christ died on the cross for us instead of our own sins. He paid the price. And then we discovered that he's now in the heavenly sanctuary ministering as a priest. And then we worked out as well that there is an opposing earthly system that's not very happy with what Christ is doing and how Christ operates and not very happy with the Bible. And so they set up a counterfeit system. Now in Acts chapter 3 verse 20, And that he may send Jesus Christ who was preached to you before, whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration, of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of his holy prophets since the world begun. What is this times of restitution or restoration? He's talking about when the earth will be made new. He's talking about the second coming when he takes his people and he makes a clean start with a holy sanctified group of people. It says in John 17:17, 17, 17, sanctify them by your truth. What is the truth? Your word is truth. What word? It's talking about the Bible. It's not talking about me. It's not talking about any church. It's talking about the Bible. The Bible is the thing that will sanctify you in conjunction with the Holy Spirit. And if we're not studying or reading our Bibles, then you will be deceived without question. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit soul and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So it says that when he comes, let us be found blameless. So, Satan, he's after you. How does prophecy describe Satan's secret strategy to cause multitudes to be lost? Let's have a look. Let's go back to the Garden of Eden. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said. Let's just pause there for a second. What is the serpent saying? And by the way, the serpent, the devil is using the serpent. Okay, And you take any culture in the world, you will always see dragons and serpents. That's another story. But he's saying, Yea, hath God said. What's that telling you? Doubt. Did God really say that? Can you really trust God? Is He reliable? There's attack secret number one. Doubt. 
that Satan's going to put doubts in your mind. He's going to give you doubts and thoughts. He'll put all kinds of things, okay, that will make you doubt and question God. Can you, someone, pass me that red bottle at the at the at the back? Can you pass that to me? Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Now, this isn't quite half empty or quite half full, but just imagine, right, that there's a little bit less water down there. Now, some people would say that that is half empty. Okay? And I call them the pessimists. And some people will say, hang about, no, it's half full. The optimist. Now, there's two views of life. You have to work out which view you take. Now, the pessimist will say, well, there's this problem, this problem, this problem, this doubt, this contradiction, I can't figure out this. And so they take the view that it's half empty, so I'm going to throw the thing away. Whereas the optimist says, well hang about, I've got enough evidence that I can trust the Bible, so the, so the bottle is half full. I might not have all the answers for the, the empty parts, but because I can trust what I've seen, then I know there's answers to the, to the questions that are not answered yet. And that's exactly the problem Satan says. Satan says to you that it's half empty, this might as well throw the thing away. Yea, hath God said. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. So now, you've got secret strategy number two. Satan tells mankind that you will not die. And he does that in a number of ways. Through spiritualism, through reincarnation. And the very fact that if you sin, and you, and you do grievous errors, you can still go to heaven. In fact, there are many people, right, who departed loved ones, supposedly come back to them, speak to them, who was wicked as anything, and supposedly they're in heaven. And so the live people are thinking, hang about, he was as wicked as anything. If he's in heaven, I can do what I like on this earth, and I'm still going to go to heaven. Ye shall not surely die, is another lie. For God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 19 And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits. What's a familiar spirit? Psychics. People that claim they can speak to the dead. So, and when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and those that are demon possessed, and unto wizards like Gandalf, that peep, and that mutter, should not the people seek unto their God for the living to the dead? What do we see today? Don't we see people and talking to psychics and tarot readers and crystal balls? The Bible is telling us we should be seeking our God. So, where can we find answers? There are so many testimonies, you know, near-death experiences. Can we rely on these? But what does the Bible tell us that happens at death? Anyone ever seen a crystal ball, by the way? You know, my mother went to see a psychic and a crystal ball. And they told my mother all kinds of stuff that actually happened in her past. So my mother was convinced. And then they convinced that some other stuff that's going to happen in the future. And it, do you think that gave my mother some peace? No. Depressed her. Put my mother on blood pressure tablets. So, is the soul immortal then? Mortal means subject to death. Immortal means imperishable. The devil would have you believe that you can do what you like and you are not really going to die <coughs> eternally. The Bible never uses the terms immortal soul or immortality of the soul. Spiritualism teaches that the soul is immortal. So when you die, 
you reincarnate into something else you reincarnate into something else until we reach something called Nirvana where you stop reincarnating and you reach the top level Hinduism is the same, Buddhism is the same in Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 4 Behold all souls are mine as the soul of the Father so also the soul of the Son is mine the soul that sinneth it shall die so that means the soul can die there's no such thing as the immortal soul the person who sins is the one who will die it is for a man's own sins that he will die and the soul who sins will die but Satan says ye shall not surely die who is right unto the law and to the testimony so is there any consciousness in death so when you die can you really speak to the dead his spirit departs he returns to his earth in that very day what his plans perish you see when you go back to the book of Genesis man was created from the dust of the earth okay he was just a lump of clay and then God himself breathed in his nostrils and gave him life it's just like a light bulb you have a light bulb and you have a switch if the switch isn't switched on and there's no electric current you just have a light bulb that does nothing but as soon as you've got electricity you've now got something called light where did the light come from so when you switch when you switch the light switch off electricity stops and the light bulb ceases to light and that's exactly the same with the human body the spirit makes it a living soul when the spirit departs it becomes a dead soul his spirit departs or his breath he returns to his earth in that very day his plans perish Ecclesiastes 9 5 for the living know that they will die but the dead know nothing so if the dead know nothing how can you communicate with the dead how can the dead be looking over you from heaven and telling you things when they know nothing who is right what you see with your eyes or by faith what God's Word is saying this is how the devil is deceiving people also their love their hatred and their envy have now what perished so let's think about it right if your loved one or someone you know dies and they're in heaven and they see you getting into trouble don't you think they're gonna be feeling pain but what does it tell tells us it says their love their hatred and their envy have now perished because the dead know nothing Job 14 21 if his sons are honored he does not know it if they are brought low he does not see it the dead do not praise the Lord nor any who go down into silence you will find more and more and more experiences of people talking to the dead or ghosts coming to see you and telling you things that they're having a nice time in heaven and you're thinking in your mind that he was, a, he was as wicked as anything and he's in heaven this is how the devil is going to say okay and then the devil will come to you in the form of a loved one and they'll start telling you things what to do and what you shouldn't do what are you going to do if a ghost comes to you and it's your mother and says you know what that Bible's a load of rubbish I'm in heaven having a good time what are you going to do what are you going to believe and there have been so many testimonies when people have seen ghosts they say depart in the name of Jesus and they just disappear because they are not really departed loved ones they're just demons out to deceive you 1 Thessalonians 4.16 For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a what? Quiet voice? With a shout. The lady's not here who was talking about the secret rapture. But here it tells us that when Christ comes, he's shouting. Can you shout quietly? Can you do it? You can't, can you? Descends from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel. 
and where the trumpet is a trumpet a loud instrument or a small or quiet instrument it's a loud one so, so when Christ comes he's coming with the sound of a trumpet and the dead in Christ shall rise first ah. so if when you die you're already alive in heaven or in hell why is it when Christ comes he says the dead in Christ rise first who's rising the Bible is very clear that when you're dead you are asleep Jesus himself said that Lazarus he sleepeth but he was dead and the issue is when you're dead you're asleep and then when Christ comes if you died loving God you rise up first let me think about this if you if you if you die and you're in heaven why didn't why does God didn't call you back down from heaven from the dead does that make sense it doesn't the Bible can be trusted then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and thus we shall always be with the Lord behold I tell you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed so we've learned that Satan creates doubt on God's Word and also Satan creates lies and says that what God says is not true because ye shall not die what else does Satan do he attacks God's law and where do we find God's law in the heavenly temple Revelation 11 19 tells us the Ten Commandments are in heaven therefore if they're in heaven they cannot be changed he shall speak pompous words against the Most High shall persecute the Saints of the Most High and shall change or and shall intend to change times and laws and we dealt with this yesterday and he shall speak words against the Most High and shall wear out the Saints of the Most High and plot to change times and laws he can think he can plot but he cannot do it because God's law cannot be changed so why does Satan plot to change God's law by the law is knowledge of what sin and whosoever committed sin transgressive also the law for sin is a transgression of the law so if Satan can cause you to break the law then you have sinned and what is the penalty for sin it's death so Satan designs strategic ways to destroy God's law and we dealt with yesterday that he has changed or attempted to change two of God's laws in the Ten Commandments first he's caused the second commandment to be removed so that allows us then to worship and bow down to idols and in the second one he changes the fourth commandment so that then we break God's commandments knowingly or unknowingly so why does Satan want people to think God's law has been changed for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord a question was asked to me what happens if you break the Ten Commandments and the true answer is you die eternally because we're all appointed to die once except for a certain group of people in the book of Revelation called the 144,000 they get translated just like Enoch and just like Elijah but for all of us average person we will all die the true death of sin is eternal death separation from God forever so the wages of sin is death